Well, welcome to this uh, webinar. And uh, today we are very happy to have uh, this very interesting paper, The Economic Cost of Locking Down Like China, uh, Evidence from City to City Truck Flows. Uh, Michael will present uh, the paper. Michael Song from uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong will present the paper. Let me do a, a very brief introduction. Um, so uh, Michael, I very much, uh, at a, as a fellow economist, financial economist, I, ve I very much uh, admire and respect Michael's very unique uh, career path. Uh, Michael cares about China and the China's capital, uh, China's uh, economic development very much. And he has done quite some, uh, some really interesting and influential work on China's uh, economic development. Some of which uh, informed and, uh, um, and uh, influenced my, my own recent research. So I first read this paper by Michael and his co-authors uh, during the um, lockdown in Shanghai. <laughs> so I experienced uh, firsthand uh, the economic no, the psychological cost of, uh, of lockdown. So um, I look forward to hearing about the economic uh, cost of lockdown uh, in China. So uh, without further delay, uh, Mike, Michael, uh, please uh, take over the mic. Uh, thanks a lot, Jing, especially for your kind introduction, uh, which I didn't really expect, but it's, uh, it's an honor uh, to, to hear that. Um, can I uh, share the screen? So let me just go back to the cover pages so and then you can see uh, uh, my co-author's name. Uh, and then the second page is, uh, is uh, as I said, you know, that paper has a very simple motivation. We try to understand the economic cost of uh, what they call uh, non-pharmacological policy interventions, uh, which refer to uh, say travel restrictions, quarantine, um, staying at home all the to the extreme is a China style uh, uh, lockdown. Um, it's actually not that uh, straightforward to estimate uh, uh, this cost uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we all uh, uh, understand there is a policy in Dogenet, that is uh, uh, governments would like to uh, take uh, uh, more draconian measures uh, in places where you know local pandemic situation uh, is uh, is worse, so this is the first thing you need to take in, take care of, and the second thing is uh, uh, especially uh, when you know the local outbreak is is very big and severe, then uh, uh, the effect uh, you 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 need to disentangle two effects. One is the effect coming from uh, policy measures, and the other is effect coming from uh, individual self preventive measures, especially. Uh, uh, when the pandemic situation is severe, people really worried about the health consequences of being uh, infected. So that's another concern. And finally, uh, uh, there are economic spillovers. Um, if one place is under lockdown, then you cannot just look at uh, economic activity change in that place. It could well be the case that uh, the effect will spill over to other places uh, uh, to which this lockdown place is connected uh, through say trade, uh, other economic uh, linkages. So um, that's why we think actually China provides a, a very good uh, environment for us to have a uh, better understanding about the uh, economic cost of uh, policy interventions. Um, and so China has uh, this uh, very famous uh, uh, zero COVID policy, or you know, uh, recently uh, we call it dynamic zero uh, uh, COVID policy. And uh, we are going to uh, focus on a specific example period that is uh, between the end of a Wuhan uh, outbreak, a lockdown, and the uh, uh, emergence of Omicron. And this is a particularly useful uh, period for this uh, study for a variety of reasons. Uh, first, uh, you know, this policy, uh, if you measure uh, the effectiveness policy by infection rate, and then this policy has been very, very successful. So we are talking about uh, uh, we're talking about at peak during this period of time before the arrival of Omicron. We're talking about that peak uh, uh, monthly infection uh, uh, number uh, uh, is uh, less than uh, three thousand. So basically, on average, daily COVID cases uh, uh, are just like uh, ten. Um, so this is really amazing in a country with the more than one billion uh, people. Um, so. Why this is a case? Well, institutionally, that's coming from uh, 
you know, almost like a very uniform and yet very strict implementation of uh, uh, zero COVID policy. So uh, uh, Jing just mentioned, you know, her experience in, in Shanghai. A lot of people, uh, I grew up in Shanghai, a lot of people uh, in my family were speculating a lockdown in Shanghai would be different from a lockdown uh, elsewhere in China. But uh, it's uh, just wishful thinking. So uh, uh, Shanghai lockdown uh, was as uh, strict as uh, lockdown in other places. So there are many policies uh, set by the Chinese government, especially central government, turn out to be not well implemented or implemented in uh, 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 very different ways across uh, different places. But this is uh, one of the few kind of policies that have been extremely well implemented. And there is not so much flexibility. You see uh, 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 across, uh, uh, that can be uh, in the sense that the policy can be adjusted by uh, local governments. So in that regard, uh, this uniform implementation just minimizes uh, uh, policy endogeneity. Even very small local outbreak can trigger uh, you know, a lockdown at the district level, even at the city level, as I will show you later. And the second thing is uh, because of the size of the outbreak, that these are all small and local outbreaks, local people are actually not so much concerned about the uh, uh, health consequences of being infected. And instead, they are really concerned about uh, uh, being put into quarantine places. Uh, so the, the fear is very different from the fear driven by uh, health considerations. And in that regard, you can also consider, you know, the fear as a consequence of uh, uh, policy interventions and lockdown uh, policies. So uh, that's why we think, you know, because of the small uh, 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 and local outbreaks and because of their strict implementation of uh, uh, zero COVID policies, we don't really have to worry too much about the self-preventive measures driven by fear of health consequence. And finally, uh, and also, you know, luckily, uh, we have uh, monthly uh, city to city truck flow data. I will show you later, you know, uh, uh, we, we argue that this is actually a good proxy for a monthly city to city uh, uh, trade that allows us uh, to disentangle uh, the local and spillover effects uh, in, a, in a structural uh, model. So now let me get to the data. First is uh, uh, truck flow data. This is data provided by a leading uh, logistical service provider in China that uh, uh, provides the services to about 10 to 15 percent of the heavy trucks uh, in China. We're talking about uh, one uh, about one million, and recently the number I think increased to uh, 1.8 million uh, heavy trucks. Um, and why uh, are these heavy trucks important? Because uh, 70 percent of China's total freight is by uh, trucks, so that's why we believe a city to city. Uh, trucks uh, actually uh, uh, capture, you know, city to city uh, trade, especially lo when you look at uh, uh, variations, time series variation in uh, city to city uh, uh, truck flow. So, and then you may think about it as a reasonable proxy for changes in city to city trade uh, quantity. And we also check the representativeness of, of, of the data. It turns out that uh, uh, truck flows are highly correlated with the city level GDP and city level uh, satellite lights. And this is the first thing uh, I want to show you. So just at the aggregate level, let's check the correlation, time series correlation between uh, COVID cases, which is in this blue line, and uh, 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 the detrended truck flow uh, 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 change, which is in this dash line. And by the way, the blue line uh, uh, is in log unit. Um, and clearly by just eyeballing this uh, figure, you see uh, a negative correlation between the two things, right? And also this figure is about the whole period starting from the first quarter of 2022 until very recently. I think the sample ends in uh, July. Um, so we're going to focus on the middle part of the sample without the, uh, the first quarter of 2020 and without the, the, the uh, most recent six months. Uh, but you can see from the figure, uh, even if you bring back the uh, two uh, uh, periods uh, into our analysis, it won't change our results too much. The reason why we want to drop them is just for a cleaner identification. But the point has been very clear once you saw the figure. In the period when you see uh, uh, more COVID cases, and then you see a decline in uh, truck flows at the aggregate level. 
And you know, in order to have a much better estimate of uh, 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 economic cost of uh, 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 lockdown policies in China, we we're going to use. Uh, 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 city level variations over time. So that uh, uh, requires uh, some uh, kind of uh, measurement about the city level lockdowns uh, in China. Now, the Chinese authority provides very good uh, uh, data uh, at the community level about the uh, daily uh, new COVID cases. But unfortunately, uh, there is no official uh, statistic about the uh, uh, city level or district level uh, lockdown. Actually, if you uh, go through uh, official documents and you'll find that uh, there is actually no uh, frequent mention of uh, lockdown. So in Chinese, it's called fengchen. So this is not the language uh, uh, the Chinese government uses. And in instead, if you go through, uh, that's, uh, that's a, a, a kind of deeper reason why you don't have official statistics about uh, uh, lockdown in China. And so you, you have to construct uh, your own uh, data on that. So we uh, uh, basically uh, went through a lot of uh, official documents and we found that uh, uh, three keywords have been frequently used by the Chinese government, especially local governments. So one is uh, 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 close off management in all areas and traffic control in all roads and public transportation out of service. So these keywords frequently show up in places uh, under uh, 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 lockdown. And then, you know, uh, we searched the uh, 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 internet and uh, scraped, you know, all uh, uh, the major kind of web pages, uh, uh, matches uh, year, months, the city with the new COVID cases and, you know, one of the three keywords. And then we manually uh, went through all the web pages and tried to drop, you know, irrelevant ones, especially, for instance, uh, as public transportation out of service uh, might not be caused by COVID or lockdown, it could be, uh, 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 caused by extreme weather conditions. So we just drop them. And then we select the, those uh, web pages uh, uh, about the official announcement on lockdown. And in the end of the day, we're able to uh, uh, identify, you know, uh, three different levels of uh, lockdown. One is city level lockdown. You know, Shanghai lockdown, for instance, is, is a whole city uh, lockdown. We call it full scale lockdown. And the second level is partial lockdown. Uh, that is one, of the counties in the city or uh, uh, several uh, counties or uh, districts in the city or in the lockdown, but not the whole city. And the, the minimum level is just a community level lockdown because uh, uh, by the, the policies of the central government, if a community reports the new COVID cases in the community will be automatically in the lockdown for 14 days. So if a city uh, reporting COVID cases, uh, but we don't find it in the either you know, partial or full lockdown, then this is the city uh, uh, under minimum uh, lockdown. For the sixth time, uh, today's presentation, we will just focus on uh, uh, full-scale lockdown. And here is a table uh, just tells you, give you some uh, rough uh, idea, you know, how much of uh, decline truck flows uh, in, you know, full-scale lockdown and in uh, uh, partial lockdown. Uh, during this Sample period. It's a, it's about twelve. Uh, this is about twenty two months. Uh, we found a total of sixteen full scale full scale lockdowns and uh, uh, twenty two partial lockdowns. And in uh, the sixteen um, full scale lockdowns, uh, you see truck flow uh, declined by uh, half. And in those uh, partial lockdowns, you see truck flow declined by uh, twenty percent. And the first thing uh, we can show here is uh, uh, some reduced form uh, uh, analysis. So uh, we construct a city peer lockdown dummy. Uh, uh, what does it mean? Well, if uh, you pick up uh, any city peer, if one city is under lockdown, then we say that the city peer uh, uh, lockdown dummy is equal, equal to one. Okay. And then we run uh, uh, this event study. Uh, uh, um, and the left panel uh, is for full-scale uh, lockdown. So here you see there's no uh, pre-trend and on impact. Uh, uh, if uh, one city is under lockdown, then the city peer involving that lockdown city's uh, truck flow will be uh, uh, cut by 40%. And this is, uh, this is about the lockdown period. And after the lockdown is uh, lifted and you see the truck flow just immediately uh, uh, bounces back to the original uh, level, okay? Um, and that's the left panel. The right panel is about the partial lockdown. And not surprisingly, the effect of partial lockdown is much less. 
uh, but still you see 10% uh, truck flow uh, decline. And then the next thing is, is to run the standard the two effects uh, uh, regression. Uh, we throw away leak and lag uh, effects and just uh, look uh, uh, at the, the on-impact uh, uh, effect. And, uh, uh, and that uh, specification allows us to uh, you know, try uh, 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 a few other controls. For instance, we add uh, COVID cases and we replace the dummy variable with the continuous variable, uh, which measures the duration of lockdown that tell us a slightly uh, a more precise estimate of the economic cost. And finally, we all know, well, some recent uh, uh, literature tells us uh, this kind of staggered DID specification has some uh, 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 drawbacks. So we use uh, uh, the, uh, the method developed by the literature to, to check our, uh, the robustness of the results and find that our results are actually very robust. Um, so this is a big table with many numbers. Uh, uh, I just want you to focus on uh, the first three numbers in, in, uh, uh, in the first row. So that tells us uh, once again, you know, on impact, uh, how much of traffic losses, uh, 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 truck flow uh, losses are caused by a lockdown, a full scale lockdown. So once again, you, here you see, uh, uh, no matter what kind of uh, controls you uh, want to add to the specification, uh, the result uh, is quite robust. Uh, we're talking about 30% to 40% uh, uh, decline uh, in uh, uh, truck flow uh, in that city pier that uh, is affected by a full scale lockdown. And then, you know, we move on to uh, the structural model. Let me use the last uh, uh, seven or eight minutes to talk about the, the structural approach and uh, some external validity check. Uh, uh, with uh, some uh, new data, including uh, uh, Shanghai uh, experiences. Uh, so why we need the structural approach? Um, the reason is very simple. The reduced form approach can only tell you uh, the local impact. Say Shanghai lockdown, how much of damage uh, uh, is caused by Shanghai lockdown to the local economy. It doesn't really tell us uh, the aggregate effect. If there's no spillover, then of course the aggregate effect is just equal to the local effect, but there has to be some spillovers. So that's why we need a trade model. Uh, the trade model here uh, is, is extremely simple. It's just an Armington uh, model. Um, uh, the only thing I want to, uh, you don't have to know what is Armington model uh, for those of you who don't know much about the trade. Uh, the only thing I want to emphasize here is uh, 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 you know, in this type of trade model, uh, uh, you have two costs. Uh, one is uh, you, you have two, you can have two shocks. One is shock to trade costs and the other is shock to productivity. But for the purpose of this paper, we don't really have to disentangle the two uh, different types of shocks. So we just put them together and call it the composite shock, the shock to composite cost. This is the thing that we're looking at. So uh, G Z here is, uh, is uh, what we call the composite cost. It's a combination of the trade cost and the local productivity. And then, you know, we adopt the first of the, all the approach uh, recently uh, developed by uh, a few economists, including uh, Ernest. Uh, um, so if you're willing to uh, do a first of the approximation, then you can write everything uh, in uh, linear terms, so, which is actually very nice and simple. So here is the key equation. So the left-hand side is uh, change in trade uh, quantity. This is a city-to-city -city, uh, trade quantity, which uh, has been uh, collapsed into uh, a big matrix. And the, the right-hand side is, uh, is a change in this composite cost, which in turn is caused uh, by you know, a lockdown or COVID. And the matrix uh, that uh, connects the two things is uh, determined by two things. One is the trade elasticity. It turns out that our results are not sensitive to the choice of the trade elasticity. And also this, uh, this uh, expenditure share uh, matrix, uh, which we calibrate to uh, China's regional import output uh, table. So once we have this uh, matrix G and we observe uh, changes in city to city uh, 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 trade quantity, which is approximate, uh, which is approximated by uh, city to city truck flow, then using this uh, linear relationship, we'll be able to back out changes in composite cost. So 
once we have a composite cluster, then you know we can uh, estimate how lockdown policies affect uh, these composite costs. Uh, I don't. I don't want to uh, uh, bother you with the uh, uh, details of the structure estimation. Just let you know, um, uh, if you do not do this uh, first of all the approach, then you probably have to solve the model by some nonlinear methods, and that will be a nightmare if uh, if you uh, uh, do structure estimation with these nonlinear methods. But the beauty of the structure, uh, the beauty of the first order approach is uh, it can tell you well. The structurally estimated parameters actually have a, a closed form solution. So that's the beauty of this uh, first order approach. Um, and then uh, we have some results, so which uh, I don't have time to show you, but just let you know, once we uh, have this uh, structural approach, then we can uh, tell people, you know, uh, 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 how much of economic damage will be uh, uh, caused by uh, lock locking down a place like Shanghai to, to the aggregate economy. So our estimates uh, uh, tell us uh, if you uh, lock down a place like Shanghai and then the local economy was down by 60% then the, the aggregate economy uh, uh, will, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the national GDP, real GDP will be cut by two to three uh, percent and uh, uh, in which a spillover effect accounts for uh, uh, 10 to 15%, which is not big, but uh, it's, it's not uh, a small number either. Um, let me skip all these things and just uh, jump to the external uh, validity check. Uh, the one thing I, I really want to point out is uh, uh, before uh, major lockdowns uh, uh, caused by uh, uh, the appearance of Omicron early this year, uh, our team actually released a report uh, to the to the public and the, and the government, uh, telling them you know uh, uh, lockdown is going to uh, uh, cause uh, big economic damage to the local economy as well as the uh, it will cause significant economic losses to to the aggregate uh, uh, at the aggregate level. Uh, some people uh, actually questioned us. Uh, they they feel like uh, our past uh, estimates uh, tend to exaggerate the damage, the economic da damage. Uh, According to our model, you know, uh, local truck flows uh, uh, will be cut by 60% if uh, the city is under a full-scale lockdown. But what happened in Shanghai is actually slightly worse. The decline uh, in truck flows in April, uh, in which uh, uh, the city was under full-scale lockdown, the decline was actually 80%. And according to the official statistics, uh, Shanghai's uh, industrial value added uh, declined by more than 60% uh, in that month. So these, these are uh, some uh, economic indicators uh, for, for Shanghai. The red lines, uh, so the solid red line is on year, a year on year growth of truck flows. Uh, that's our data. Uh, the dashed red line is uh, 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 consumption uh, growth, uh, once again, using the private sector data. And all the three black lines are official statistics. Uh, they are about you know, industrial value added, they're about uh, retail sales, and they're about local government revenue. But it doesn't really matter uh, which indicator you're looking at. They all point to one simple fact that, that is uh, uh, lockdown uh, uh, wreaked havoc on the local economy. And the magnitude is very similar to those we have seen before. Right. And this is Jilin province. So you see uh, uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, Jilin province was also uh, uh, two major cities in that province was uh, under a full scale lockdown uh, in April. And this is Beijing. Beijing uh, uh, was not, uh, hasn't yet been uh, locked down, but you know, very strict uh, COVID policies uh, are also implemented there. And the point is that uh, you see, uh, uh, the red lines and the uh, black lines, uh, they are actually uh, telling us uh, uh, not just qualitatively the same thing, but quantitatively very similar uh, uh, story. So uh, uh, let me just uh, quickly wrap up. Uh, this is a very simple uh, exercise uh, about you know, the cost side of lockdown. Um, and one thing I would like to say, I would like to say two things. Uh, first, you know, uh, it's likely that our estimate uh, uh, underestimates uh, the cost of uh, lockdown for a very simple reason, because uh, uh, once you see uh, uh, more cities uh, were locked down, uh, as what happened 
uh, over the past few years, in, uh, sorry, a few months in China. Um, and with longer duration, then it could well be the case that uh, uh, the economic damage is, is larger, could be larger, uh, because so you change the expectation, you cause uh, uh, a supply chain, a bigger supply chain uh, uh, disruption. Uh, so that's the first thing. And the, the second thing is uh, uh, our study is just a very first uh, a step towards understanding you know, the cost and benefit of uh, China style uh, lockdown. Uh, um, I think a lot more uh, uh, efforts need to be done to understand the benefit side, just like uh, what our uh, discussant Lisa has done uh, for, for the US. So she has a very good paper on that. So we would like to hear uh, what she's going to say about our work. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Michael. Um, uh, our discussant is uh, Elisa uh, Jan, Jan, Jan Noni. <laughs> Uh, Elisa actually is uh, uh, living in uh, Europe right now. So this is kind of a very early morning for her. So we, we, we are very grateful uh, for, for your willingness to get up so early. Uh, Elisa, uh, please go ahead. You have 25 minutes. Okay, so I'll be, uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah, so I'll be very brief. I'll, uh, and uh, well, thank you for the invitation. This is a very interesting paper and I think it, it contributes to this uh, very long literature of you know uh, putting together this uh, understanding of uh, the co economic cost of COVID, and I guess for um, it's just like it's very important that such a study gets done um, for China. And just to have a little bit, just to put the paper a little bit more in the framework. I mean, I already Michael did such a great job, so I don't think I. But let me just restate pretty much a little bit what Michael just said and put a little bit in context. So again, like what's the big question here, really what are the large costs of lockdowns, especially like in a, a country that uh, uh, implemented uh, several lockdowns like China. And, um, and the interesting thing is that even if you know, like we have uh, tons of papers uh, right now um, about understanding the economic cost of lockdowns yet, we really don't know exactly what's what what's the economic cost of this. So, and and the evidence is still quite scarce. And in you know, lots of there were a lot at the very beginning. There were a lot of COVID papers uh, just thinking about the aggregate economy. And at some point, more urban, spatial economic papers were trying to understand also the fact that you know, cities implemented uh, different types of lockdowns and. Uh, these actually were interconnected. And so the, some other papers use this uh, uh, urban and spatial uh, um, uh, economic models, uh, structural models, and also some uh, uh, reduced form evidence to understand a little bit what were the costs, but effectively what was missing was actually really having some data that could speak to it. They couldn't really help us to gather some knowledge about this. Uh, um, economic cost of lockdowns. And so what this paper does to me, in, in my opinion, is actually really like uh, um, bringing this frontier forward and uh, measuring, uh, using using uh, this unique data to measure flows, effective like uh, flows that were effectively seen and uh, uh, between cities and then allow, allowing uh, to understand spillovers between cities. And so, once you have this, you can actually take into account these uh, uh, spillovers and these general equilibrium effects uh, in the special equilibrium framework using some interesting and, and modern techniques. What's the punchline here? Um, well, what I see is that effectively there were spillovers between cities are fundamental to understand uh, the economic costs of lockdown. And what I would like to praise here is actually this is a very it's a great example of a COVID paper because there are, it goes beyond, you know, just make some hypotheses, but also brings to the table some clear data and um, like a, a clever data collection and connects uh, this COVID literature by innovating in several dimensions, and, and but also with very important um, new dimensions. So this is a bit what I see uh, in this paper right now. And so what are, as, as a main result is like, uh, we do see that uh, economic costs of strict lockdowns are actually quite large. And yet, I mean, what we were, what I was saying, saying before is that really like there are very few papers addressing this, uh, this issue empirically. 
Again, why is it complicated? Well, lack of data, identification strategy, and really like uh, clever models to run counterfactual. They can speak to the overall effects of this. Again, yep. This, uh, just to, to restate it, the innovation here is really collecting this uh, unique data and to, understand, to study a relatively traditional question because now it's becoming a, a model of a traditional question, really understand the economic cost lockdown, and also using the special equilibrium model with the special spillovers. Um, so I don't think I will need uh, 25 minutes. I think I probably like I can just like. Um, I, I just need five more minutes about this, but just really like. You know, once we've set this paper in space, to me, these are like the main, my, I, I have some comments here, not really necessarily more to kind of like things that could be clarified perhaps in the paper. It could be, you know, like uh, maybe uh, brought up in, in terms of discussion. Um, but I do, I really think that the paper already like is, is bringing a lot to the table compared to what we had in terms of thinking about lockdowns and the economic cost of that. So just some um, a few comments about the data and empirical strategy, thinking really about like, uh, I was just thinking about the monthly frequency of the data um, and also uh, some sample size identification, what's the effective variation we are using. And then uh, two more comments, more about the, uh, the model and overall, um, uh, more on the overall points of like the punchline of the paper, really like thinking about uh, this role of interconnectedness, how much more can we explore there? And then perhaps this is an unfair comment, but somehow at the end of the day, you know, um, what about the optimal policy? So I know this is already a complicated uh, framework you guys are, are using, and uh, but really like, you know, these are the policies and, uh, you know, we probably will have other waves of uh, COVID going forward and so, what would be the optimal policies that we should think about implementing? We have seen, you guys never now analyze some of policies and what should we do next? And again, there are, I, I have some comments there. Okay, so again, just thinking about it. So first of all, in terms of data frequency, the key empirical findings: the local lockdown decreased structural by several percentage points. And then here the data, so my reading through the paper and perhaps uh, I, Maybe I missed something here is that the data is measured monthly, and uh, yet the average length of the lockdown, especially the part like some of them are the frequency is less than a month. So, is there any, any way? I mean, uh, it, the, it, this bias, you know, this, this could uh, bias the results uh, up and uh, down, but effectively, if this is just uh, um, classical measurement error, this should not have any effect. Uh, but however, it wasn't clear to me whether there should be any concern, whether this is not any type of classical measurement error. And because these parameters and eventually we want to bring um, to the, in the model eventually for this might have an impact on the spillover. And so if the spillover is large enough, then the bias may be, um, may be large too. So I mean, again, still it's not, it's not uh, uh, I don't think it's, it's really hard in the end to identify spillovers in this type of context, but again, perhaps just playing with some uh, simulation just to see how much this bias may be uh, relevant there. This is my first comment. And uh, second, um, this is like, again, just in terms of, first of all, like as uh, Michael was saying, you guys went and uh, literally collected data uh, about uh, uh, different lockdowns manually. So this is just a really great effort. And yet, I mean, still like makes sense, makes sense that the identification comes from comparing lockdowns. And this is this is quite clever in the sense of, you know, again, okay, sure, comparing lockdown may be, may be quite endogenous, but because lockdowns were so strictly implemented, so even if they were just very, very, there were very, very few cases, then yet the lockdown took place. So somehow this addresses mechanically <laughs> in a nice way the identification issues, but there could still be like some, you know, there could still be a consideration whether I, if a city that saw um, some, you know, like my neighboring cities implemented the lockdown, I might not have implemented that lockdown because my neighbors were already implementing it. And so I was taking advantage to some extent of my neighbors already, um, you know, potentially like uh, taking care of it. And so I, I felt safer. So I wonder when it, whether any type of that consideration 
may actually, even if you, you, you know you do see these lockdowns being implemented relatively um, you know, sharply as soon as there were very few cases, but even it will be interesting to see whether, at least with some um, special consideration, do, do cities that actually saw a neighbor's um, implementing lockdowns were like a little bit more loose in that dimension. And so whether, could that be, um, be considered? And I, want, I don't think you guys should do any major effort there, like just to take into account my comment, what I would do perhaps is just to see any special correlation of this and introduce any distance, distance fixed effect and some distance control to see whether the results still stand. Um, then, and then I have uh, two more comments related to this, a little bit more like the uh, model or punchline of the paper. And so again, like it's like, effectively been interesting to, th to think a little bit more about the, about the punchline of the paper. So these are like some model-based estimates um, of lockdown that take into account uh, uh, simulations and this paper actually, this is what we knew, this paper is actually uh, uses uh, this uh, track flow. And I think like more could be done in that dimension to highlight better the punchline of the paper yet like it is unclear what's the impact of uh, this interconnectedness on the health component um, of the economy in the sense that there are actually, there are lots of economic costs, but also there are, uh, there are health costs uh, beyond the economic costs. Where, by health costs, I mean, first of all, literally the, the cost of lives, but also the, the health costs, you know, like of sanitation and the healthcare and so on and so forth. And actually, you know, like bringing that up um, using using the structure you guys have already could be, could be interesting. And uh, can we learn this through, can we learn something new through the special component of it and how important it is? And, uh, um, Finally, my last comment about uh, uh, lock, the optimal lockdown policy. So, you know, I was reading the paper and uh, I thought, okay, this is a super interesting evidence uh, of using this track flow data is actually very clever. You guys have a nice identific identification. You have, uh, you, have uh, uh, you, you have the structural model on the other hand, and then the question comes naturally to some extent. Uh, what would be the optimal lockdown policy? And clearly there are some co-movement among cities that seems to be evident. So, and then the question to me was like, okay, so suppose we were to consider some optimal lockdown policies, would there be any strategic complementarities um, between cities? With the idea that uh, say like, uh, uh, do say we are thinking about lockdown policies by cities, should we think about these cities as uh, single entities? That decide they are lockdown policies individually. Should we think about city, you know, like a central, a, a central planner deciding uh, for the lockdown policies, or should we really that we think a little bit about the strategic interactions uh, among cities, any type of free riding behavior, or any type of coordination behavior? I, um, as Michael was saying, like we I, in, in another paper, I was actually studying this. Uh, optimal lockdown policies uh, for the US. And it's actually, this is not an easy, um, an easy problem. We were also running into some of these considerations. And I do think that in the, in the case of China, uh, with the more data you have, we did this in, uh, in 2020, now in 2022, you guys have, uh, uh, you have a lot of data and you have the model. And so I think uh, highlighting, and I don't know, perhaps this could be for the next paper, um, it, going forward how this consideration might take place into studying the optimal lockdown policies, I think this would be such a, a relevant uh, policy question uh, going forward. But uh, I would like to see some discussion, uh, at least in, in this paper. So I think I'm uh, basically just, let me, let me conclude. That, uh, um, I, I, did, I really think this is, a, um, I, I've read several uh, COVID papers with this uh, eye on the spatial side and this interconnectedness. And I think this is actually a really nice paper uh, to gather evidence on the effective uh, cost of strict lockdown policies. And it's just a simple concept to test uh, relevant uh, questions of economics with others. I think we think it's actually a large undertaking and effort with potential for several other implications. It's a realistic model 
a modeling of space connectivity. It's a, it's a clever approach to use to collect this data and uh, micro estimate uh, this local spillover. And I do think it's still like, it, despite the, the gazillion papers that are out there, still is like it's one of the two papers that actually has empirical evidence is on impact of lockdowns and its spillovers. Full for, uh, full for thoughts that were, again, just to summarize what I was saying before, like a going, going, you know, like natural um, consequences of your studies, actually really thinking about more, the deeper eye on these uh, optimal lockdown policies. What's the role of these strategic complementarities that might be, uh, that might be happening? And finally, you know, like it's always interesting to have a comparison uh, um, of policy by country, like I'm, I'm in Europe and I was in the US and it was just such a heterogeneity happening there and it would be interesting to understand a little bit uh, why comparing China to you know, other, other countries and understand a little bit why this were applied so differently. It's also not just from a political point of view, but also from an economic point of view. So, well, thank you very much, and I, I really enjoyed uh, reading the paper. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit, it's, uh, it's a little bit early for me, so I hope <laughs> I made myself clear enough. Thank you so much. Thanks, Elisa. Uh, uh, Michael, you want to um, say a few yeah, sure. words? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, since we we have uh, uh, some time here, yeah, so yeah, yeah so uh, uh, I I hope that I can I can uh, say a bit more than usual uh, uh, to to these great uh, uh, points uh, uh, made by uh, Elisa. Uh, all the points are, are well taken. I, I just want to say a few uh, uh, things <laughs> about the major points that you mentioned. You know, it would be very interesting to to study uh, policy endogeneity. Uh, especially through kind of spatial correlation. Uh, one example, I, I think we probably exaggerated a little bit about uh, 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 no concern uh, of policy endogeneity. There is a concern there. Uh, for instance, uh, there is a, a strange case uh, um, uh, in Langfang. It's a, it's a, a, a medium sized city next to Beijing. Uh, what happened is, uh, uh, I think last year, uh, January uh, 2021, that city recorded only one case, but immediately was uh, was locked down. And the concern uh, is very much uh, following your intuition, but actually it's uh, it's the opposite side. Beijing was not under lockdown. It, Beijing cannot be locked down. And since the city is very close to Beijing, so so that's why the small city was uh, was immediately under lockdown. That's exactly uh, what, what you're saying. Although you know it's it's the it's the opposite. Uh, they are paying the cost. They're contributing to to Beijing instead of taking advantage of uh, lockdown in neighboring city. So this is something uh, uh, very interesting to to, to study. Um, and another thing is about punchline the paper. So this is also something that we have been struggling uh, for so long. Um, we were hoping you know that the spillover effect could be larger. And that's also uh, a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, policy makers uh, uh, exactly worried about. The, uh, they want to know, for instance, locking down big places like Shanghai, you know, how much of spillovers uh, would it be generating? And when, when they saw, you know, 10% uh, or 15%, uh, uh, they feel like uh, the effect uh, is actually not that big. Um, so I don't have much to say about this uh, uh, spillover effect. It's probably quantitatively as small in any uh, trade model uh, uh, if you calibrate it to, to, the, to the data. But one thing I, I want to say is the result uh, could be uh, slightly different if we use a better input-output table. So we, we actually uh, we tried a, a better input-output table, uh, which unfortunately we cannot use for... Um, for this uh, research, and we find uh, larger uh, spillover effects. So the official regional input per table uh, we use is for 2012. It could be quite different from uh, today's uh, input per structure. And once we use better data, then we find larger uh, spillover. It's like uh, from uh, uh, up from 10 to 15 to 15 to 20 percent. Um, so this is, uh, uh, but once again, you know, it's a kind of freestyle response. I, I don't know 
uh, exactly if I providing anything uh, useful, just, just trying to say, you know, uh, we have been struggling uh, for a long time, uh, uh, exactly because the spillover effect is, is less than uh, what, what we uh, expected. Uh, and the last thing is, uh, is optimal policy. And that's definitely uh, kind of the, uh, the thing that we are, uh, we are planning, we're, 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 we're thinking uh, very hard about. Um, especially, uh, you know, the optimal spatial allocation of lockdown. This is something that uh, we, we haven't yet thought about, uh, but uh, you're absolutely right. This is a very natural uh, uh, way to think about uh, uh, how to allocate the government resources in fighting for uh, uh, COVID. Uh, just identify uh, the key spots uh, spatially uh, uh, using a model just like uh, what you uh, are working on in model with uh, mobility and trade, you, you can you can find the hot spots and uh, find the best uh, place to to lock down. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, very interesting and challenging. You, but I mean, we have uh, we have uh, 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 experts like uh, Ernest in our team. Uh, we will push him to work harder for for us on this thing. Okay, so thanks a lot. Um, so, so well, um, let me let me start by asking one question, Michael. So I also find the spillover to be quite interesting, and uh, maybe is it could it be because the the connection between two cities is really um, a linear connection, and because you went through this uh, mapping pretty quickly, so I didn't really get it. Could it be that it's maybe nonlinear? Uh, that's one possibility. And also when you fit that matrix G, did you use, so you used the input output uh, table. I wonder, was the tracking information used in that uh, matrix, in estimating that matrix? Uh, so, so, oh. yeah. so, because I, uh, I think to the extent that the tracking information is interesting, it gives you a real time, uh, measure of uh, economic activity. So maybe uh, as Elisa said, monthly may be too, too, too low of a frequency. Maybe we can go a higher frequency. But I think another dimension of that tracking is that truck flows from one city to another, right? So I, I wonder if you could think about the matrix using the track flow information. If I didn't get your estimation, maybe it's a good time for you to clarify that uh, estimation of that G matrix as well. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so this, this, is, uh, this is a very important clarification uh, question. Um, so we can use a, a truck flow data to construct G, but uh, um, one limitation is that our truck flow data do not really tell us, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, do not have industry information. So the import table, the advantage of the official import table is that, uh, you know, you, you, you can see, uh, you know, Shanghai steel, uh, how much of Shanghai steel uh, uh, is sold into, say, Beijing market for car industry there. So, but truck flow doesn't really tell us uh, uh, the industry level uh, information. So, uh, but, you know, we have checked uh, the correlation between truck flow and the import uh, uh, table uh, without industry information. And these two things are indeed uh, highly correlated. So uh, you're right. But for, for the nonlinear effect, uh, I totally agree. Um, one big limitation uh, of extrapolating our estimate to um, uh, 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 the Omicron uh, uh, period is uh, Think about Shanghai. Shanghai was under lockdown for two and a half months, or you know, nearly three months. Uh, that lockdown, uh, I don't think it uh, uh, happened, you know, before the arrival of uh, Omicron. So in most cases, you have a one month lockdown. So that means uh, uh, any economic damage caused by one month long lockdown might not be uh, useful or not, might not be so reliable. Uh, if you want to uh, extrapolate uh, uh, that for uh, costs, cost by say three months uh, uh, long lockdown. Because you know, think about one month lockdown, uh, even if you don't have this nonlinear uh, effect, then for one month lockdown, many factories might have enough inventory uh, for one uh, month uh, long lockdown. But if you're locking down 
places like Shanghai for three months, then I, I believe you know most uh, uh, factories will uh, run out of uh, their inventory. Then the supply uh, uh, chain disruption will be much bigger. So uh, uh, just put aside technical issues. I think you know uh, there is a, a potential issue uh, there. So I, I totally agree. And the, the nonlinear effect is certainly something we would need to. Uh, 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 pay attention to. We haven't yet done uh, any nonlinear, you know, uh, 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 approach, uh, but it will be useful to to just compare that. Uh, uh, Mike was uh, uh, Ernest claimed that uh, first of the approach will give us a pretty good uh, approximation, but we never check, you know, the validity of uh, his uh, his claim. Uh, but anyway, I, I trust what he's what he said. Michael, um, can yeah. I ask? A <clears throat> A very specific question about, you know, China has this uh, network of highways. You know, when we talk about city lockdowns, you know, sometimes they do it on the highway. You know, it's not necessarily that uh, the, you know, the highway has an entrance to the city, right? But then it depends on the city, how far out of the city they set up the checkpoint and do not allow trucks to come in. And also for the highway system, um, for instance, you, if you want to go to B, but you have to pass A, and then if A is, it's, it's a network. Um, so I don't know whether in your, in your calculation, you consider that, you know, because I saw a lot of uh, newspapers, articles, um, truck drivers, they're stuck at the checkpoints for several days. Uh, I don't know whether your data is fine enough to check up all of those different degree of regulations and how does that take into account of the network of the highways? Yeah, so uh, I think you, you raised two uh, different uh, questions, but related uh, uh, questions. So uh, uh, the first is, uh, let, let me start with the last one. Uh, uh, that is simpler, you know, we, we didn't check that. It's, it's, a, it's a very, you know, uh, big issue uh, in mm -hmm. China, uh, especially in, in uh, March and April. Uh, a lot of the cities such as block entry, uh, 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 entries and highway, uh, blocking trucks uh, to to arrive uh, in these cities. So this is a big issue, but you know we 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 haven't yet collected any data on that. But this is uh, certainly something important because you know this is a, a significant part of lockdown policy. So not just uh, 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 force people to stay at home; it's also uh, blocking uh, trucks from entering. Uh, into into the city, uh, uh, but unfortunately, I don't have uh, much to say about that. And the the, the first question is is extremely important. Um, so, I didn't have time to elaborate on that in this uh, short presentation. So, um, um, the one or two million uh, uh, trucks data that we have, uh, most of them uh, is from their GPS records. So, in that. Uh, in that sense, you're absolutely right. Um, most of trucks, we only know where they are and where they're heading to, but we don't know exactly which city uh, they departed and which city they will be arriving. Uh, so that's very different, very different because you, you, when you see truck, uh, a truck uh, located between Beijing and Tianjin, you don't know if uh, 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 the truck is uh, shipping goods from Beijing or Tianjin or you know, the, the truck is shipping goods from Beijing to Shanghai, or the, the truck is shipping goods from uh, you know, somewhere else to uh, Shanghai just through the uh, route connecting Beijing and Tianjin. This is very important. So to, to, to address this issue, we use a smaller sample of, of, of these, uh, uh, these trucks, which uh, provide exact uh, departure and arrival locations. So the truck flow variation we're talking about actually uh, those trucks uh, that uh, that are telling us exactly where they uh, depart and the, where they will be arriving. So it's like a bilateral uh, truck flow. Uh, so these are regular uh, 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 logistical companies providing shipment services between two uh, cities, like, you know, logistical company between uh, uh, Beijing and Tianjin, they're just shipping goods uh, regularly between the two cities. So we will be, uh, we can identify them so that's a, that's a, just a small uh, part of uh, the one or two million uh, truck flows. But the thing is, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, if you look at uh, this particular uh, sample, then you'll find that the variations are actually correlated, highly correlated with uh, 
just you see uh, uh, the, the number of uh, uh, trucks uh, uh, on, on these road segments, uh, regardless of the where they uh, from or where they heading to, right? So that's uh, but that's a very very important conceptual issue to, to clarify. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, so, Michael, relating to the um, policy implication, I wonder, because living in Shanghai before the lockdown, we had this, we used to be very proud that we have this smart lockdown, sl smart, um, what do you call it, partial lockdown, a smart isolation policy. Shanghai was doing really well, and the, the economic cost is minimal prior to the April lockdown. So I wonder if your paper could say something about, is there any heterogeneity here in terms of the effectiveness of that lockdown, whether we should wait? In other words, is there a dynamic feature of that lockdown? So, so partial lockdown and then leading to a full lockdown, the economic cost of that dynamic pass, is that the same as just a very harsh lockdown and then have a short duration? Yeah. So, so th th this is kind of related to uh, Lisa's uh, point. You know, if we can, uh, she I think she was thinking about uh, uh, let's say uh, identifying important cities uh, in a country, but you are talking about identifying important you know uh, areas in a in a in a city. But that that's uh, that's uh, that's a similar. Uh, but I think the variations in policy I think largely driven by. Uh, 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 how uh, infectious uh, the virus uh, is. So uh, I can, I can uh, share my screen again to tell you, you know, um, um, what happened in recent months. Um, so, so that figure tells, uh, tells us uh, uh, the proportion of the people in China uh, uh, who are under lockdown. Uh, uh, this is kind of a new approach. In the paper, we, we used city level approach and now we use county level approach. And we, we use the same, uh, pretty much the same uh, method. The only thing is uh, now the Chinese government is using a new word, uh, static management uh, to all areas. So that means, uh, uh, once again, it's a, it's a new way to, to uh, uh, the new way means uh, lockdown. And here you see, a very sharp difference. Uh, before Omicron came, uh, you know, I, I, di I, I didn't report uh, um, the, the proportion uh, uh, in last year, but you know, uh, this is uh, pretty much the same as uh, uh, the first two months of this year. Uh, the proportion of the population uh, 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 that was under lockdown is just uh, about half percent. So uh, if you assume, you know, uh, the same GDP per capita across uh, 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 Chinese uh, counties, and then you know only uh, 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 half percent of the total GDP uh, was affected by by lockdown. Um, and if you assume you know lockdown is going to uh, knock off uh, half of local GDP during the lockdown period, then you know it's a uh, half times half. Uh, it's a quarter percent of uh, GDP will be gone by lockdown uh, policies. It's a very small effect at the aggregate level before Omicron came. Uh, exactly because you don't need uh, uh, many lockdowns and you don't need uh, uh, long lockdowns. But now uh, uh, things uh, have become very different, uh, especially in April and March. And now nearly 10% of population uh, in China was under lockdown. So the scale is much bigger and the duration is also longer. And then, you know, once you see that uh, and you, if you assume uh, you're willing to uh, uh, take our estimate seriously, say that uh, in those regions, uh, half uh, GDP will be gone because of lockdown. Then we're talking about uh, almost like 5% of uh, national GDP uh, uh, is uh, 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 reduced by uh, this uh, scale of, uh, of lockdown uh, in the two months. That's a, that's a much bigger uh, effect. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. You know, uh, the duration and scale of lockdown, I think, is mainly uh, uh, driven by uh, the infection of, uh, of the virus. Uh, so the Chinese authority clearly responds to that by 
uh, locking down more cities, uh, law, uh, more areas so with longer uh, duration. Um, and fortunately, uh, the situation is uh, a lot better now. Uh, in the past two months, you see about uh, four or five percent of the population is under lockdown, was under lockdown. That's already half of uh, the level you see in April uh, and, uh, and May. And that's why the market uh, 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 responded uh, very positively to this decline. But still, you know, this level uh, is still much higher than the level you see uh, last year. So uh, uh, half uh, times uh, 5%, that means, you know, if the whole year on average, 5% uh, population is in the lockdown, then the back of, back of envelope calculation will uh, be telling us uh, uh, two or 3% of GDP uh, this year will be gone by uh, uh, this level of lockdown. So that's a kind of a rough uh, implication of uh, policy responses to, 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 to Omicron. Okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so since we still have uh, about seven minutes and there is an open question uh, in the Q&A box. So let me just uh, read it. Um, hello, P Professor. So I have a, uh, a little, conf I'm a little confused about the technical details. For the goods consumed domestically, how to calculate the differentiation? I mean, some in one city truck flow cannot capture easily some, and some goods may not be de delivered by uh, use, usual, by using truck. Uh, I guess it's the question about how to calculate that matrix. So, um, so I think you've already answered that question when I asked that question, so. Um, um, oh, yes. Um, yeah, the, the, I, I guess uh, uh, the question is once again about the, if uh, we have uh, uh, goods classification or industry classification, uh, but unfortunately we don't. So uh, the assumption that we are using is, uh, you know, uh, we assume pro proportionality. So um, uh, if we see, um, say, a uh, truck flow between uh, Beijing and Tianjin, you know, uh, uh, they're cut by uh, half, for instance. Then uh, uh, the, in, the, uh, uh, in the structure estimation, we would just uh, uh, assume, you know, um, uh, all sectors uh, are affected by uh, the same uh, the, uh, same change to what we call composite cost, which is combination of uh, uh, trade cost and uh, productivity. So in a way, if you assume trade costs that don't change, that means um, all industries are subject to the same productivity shock. Uh, uh, caused by uh, lockdown. So that, that's of course uh, is, uh, is a questionable uh, assumption, but this is, uh, this is all we uh, have so far. I still believe that the truck flow information maybe could be used to map out that linkage. And also since it's dynamic, maybe there will be some dynamic rewiring. You know, once it is, uh, is blacking out and then you might have uh, truck, you know, truck flow is, is smarter than uh, the static input output uh, map, or um, not smarter, but more dynamic. So maybe you might have some rewiring uh, going on and uh, somehow alleviate the uh, impact. Well, the, 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 that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's possible. And actually uh, that, that requires some uh, uh, dynamic model, uh, but once again, we can rely on Ernest's uh, talents. You know, uh, he he has a dynamic model to deal deal with exactly the thing that you're thinking about. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. <laughs> so uh, we, we, Ernest is is quiet, but we've been pushing him uh, on several fronts. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, I guess. Um, Unless we have more questions here, um, it's uh, Michael. It's a really an interesting paper, and I look forward to seeing revisions and updatings on, on more events to come uh, later this year, especially by the end of this year. So it will be uh, it will be interesting uh, to to follow up on this this paper. 
So um, before I, uh, I thank you very much, Elisa, for staying up so late, uh, getting up so early uh, to discuss the paper. Um, uh, so before we end, I want to announce for our, uh, uh, Zhu you want to announce? Um, let me get the information. Oh, I have that information. Yeah, you can do it. <clears throat> uh, okay. So for next uh, webinar, uh, September 15, um, women's, about one month later, we're going to have uh, a paper titled Internationalizing Like China. So Michael, your, your uh, initial paper title of, uh, of your initial paper has uh, gone through several variations. So, um, so Internationalizing Like China, uh, by, uh, it's going to be presented by Jesse Schrager from uh, Columbia University. So we all look forward to seeing you again in about a month. Thank you very much for your participation. See you next time. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Elisa. Yeah.